Gestalt IT is proud to present the On-Premise IT Roundtable. The idea is simple. Gather people who live, breathe, and eat enterprise IT, put them in a room, and get them talking. On the Roundtable for Episode 0, we thought we'd share a fun little episode about the use of painful words, acronyms, and phrases in enterprise IT. If you enjoy the show, check back on gestaltit.com slash podcast for more great episodes. Hi, I'm Tom Hollingsworth. Welcome to a special episode of the Gestalt IT Roundtable Podcast, a podcast for people in the IT industry, discussion topics from Tech Field Day delegates throughout the year um, about a variety of topics. Normally, we dive into some really technical subjects and some hot pressing um, items in the world, but today we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to talk about terminology <laughs> that we probably don't want to hear anymore. Um, one of the things that Tech Field Day is absolutely famous for is jumping on things that we hear over and over and over again in the industry. Um, you may have heard some of these terms like single pane of glass, double click, drill down. Um, I want to get some thoughts from the people around the table about why these things are, are so irritable to us. So I'm going to open the floor up to the fine folks sitting around here. You can't see them since you're listening to this, but I promise you they have some thoughts. Who wants to go first? Ethan. Do we need to get premise and premises off our chest to kind of get that out there, yeah, Tom? Yeah, that's um, a good starting point. Yes. So who would like to explain why premise drives us absolutely batty? Because it's wrong. <laughs> it's incorrect. A premise is not a place. It is uh, an idea or a... Uh, uh, it's an some, assumption. Yeah. A premise is, is the physical place. But a lot of people say, on premise. On, what, well, what is your premise that you're about to share with us? It's wrong. It's English. It's the grammar police. That's what we're doing here. As Justin Ward would say, words matter. How about acronym pronunciation? Oh, yeah. E-grip. How many of you guys? Hippie dues. Nipples. Actually, it's Nipples. funny. We don't actually pronounce NPLS except as a joke, but verf gets said all the time. Which... Verf, yeah. Quas. 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 Oh, oh, I hate Oh, quas. no. <laughs> I kind of like pronouncing acronyms. I think it can provide some useful humor. So I'm a big fan of Bupadu, as I mentioned before we started. You know, if they actually spell something, maybe that's okay. But, you know, if, if, it, if it doesn't have any vowels, you shouldn't say it. That's kind of where I'm at. Well, Bupadu like MPLS. That, there's no vowels there. It's MPLS. Then what about LACP? Yeah, LACP. <laughs> That one actually came up. This week, someone said like, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, times. that one doesn't count, though. <laughs> why are you filthy left? Yeah, I, I, don't think I, don't know what, I don't know what the rule set is, but there's, a, there's some sort of rule set that most of us seem to have. So do we say OSPF? I've, I've never, never heard that, that one. Yeah. No? Or is is? Never Although we well, depends we on what the say name is. We do to call it ISIS. Yeah. Right? Yeah. ISIS yeah. Up until yeah. a couple ISIS. years ago. Yeah. Now, now a lot of people say ISIS for <laughs> a variety of reasons. But actually, I want to go back to the, the terminology that we don't like. You know, obviously, we jumped right out there with premise and premises and, mm -hmm. and the fact that I, I actually have trained myself now to say on-site because that, that's kind of pretty, <laughs> that, that is the thing. But what about single pane of glass? I mean, that's Great. one that comes up. And as soon as somebody says that there's, there's groaning just, just depends how you spell pain. Uh, yeah, pain. No, I, I hear it, and I'm, I'm thinking single pain in the ass. <laughs> but realistically, we're just talking about human nature. It's cliche, it's overdone, and so we just it grates us the wrong way on a psychological level. There's nothing really grammatically wrong with these terms. They're marketing terms that do stand for something, but they do grate no. us in a certain way. Oh, Scott's going to disagree with well, you. Well, no, they do stand for something, but the problem is, is they stand for different things everywhere. Like All right, SDN. that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. What does that actually mean? Yeah. It's totally lost actual concrete meaning. It's not like MPLS. We know exactly what that mm -hmm. means. That refers to specific you no. know, RFCs but and it standards. Doesn't. But You say MPLS today, and, you know, uh, you, you can uh, you can go and say I have an MPLS service, and in one in one uh, case it's they're taking it from a provider, in one case they're operating an IP core infrastructure. I, I think even in well, in, that's using the word wrong. Well, it could no, be, but it's, but the even in the in the industry that's how it's used. That, and, it could even and be it's layer, layer two versus layer three MPLS. I mean, you don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like. It's still more you, you concrete switch, than single pane of glass. You switch oh, providers, and the word trunk means something different. You know, oh, that's yeah. absolutely uh, true. Or even between pink vendors and everything. Of course, well, those are some of those channel. that we've. I mean, who 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 says L A N? Right? 
like <laughs> land and wan, right? Like we've we've accepted those into the vernacular so completely that we don't even think twice about. But I'm highly about allergic to quas. <laughs> I, I would say it's maybe right. how the inventor, you know, uh, pronounced it. But then again, we would have, you know, GIF and GIF. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the single pane of glass thing because I think there's another reason that we're resistant to certain terms that get used like that because they're just not true. There is no single pane of glass ever in any of these solutions. It is almost always, uh, if you try to cram all the information you actually want to see on one screen, they, they don't make them big enough or tiny enough for that. Maybe they do with a 5K screen that's about a wall size, but to get your single pane of glass, it doesn't work. It doesn't, you, and there's never, there's always been promise after promise of, this is going to be the product that ties all of the information from all of your different systems into this one system, and you can look at the one thing and know exactly what's going on with your network. And that's never been true, not even kind of close. And, and, and so we, every time we hear it, we just got to barf reflexively. It's and terrible. would we ever really want that? Because it's, like you said, just information overload to have mm. everything on one screen. Well, wait a minute. It wouldn't work. Well, that rule doesn't apply to all of the things that we have problems with. If somebody says, let's circle the wagons and run it up the flagpole, <laughs> that has nothing to do with the fact that a single pane of glass is an unrealistic, uh, you know, you know uh, uh, dream, right? So that, there, that still doesn't, it doesn't fit into the overarching, why do we not like these things? Well, well yeah, I don't maybe, know the answer. <laughs> maybe it's because marketing departments that deal with high, highly um, intelligent technology, things that are difficult to describe, they have to find a way to relate that to people who don't work in the industry because let's face it if we walked into a hospital and tried to understand the technical vernacular that they use on a daily basis it would be extremely difficult until someone came out and said you know it's really more like this and Ethan is currently flagging me down I think he has a thought <laughs> Wait, no I don't I don't think it's it's about communicating an, you know, an idea it's about the fact that uh, you, you you are Using a buzzword, you someone you think someone wants you to say, oh, I need to be able to say a single pane of glass so I can check that box. When, and, and maybe you do need that at a management level, I guess. But it's like, oh, it's a feature set. Oh, it's a single pane of glass? Got it. Check the box. Whereas the engineering people that actually use the products know that it's nonsense and you don't care about these things. Another reason we you know, reject them. We, we don't want to hear that term because it's largely meaningless and not helpful. Well, it goes That's, back to the same things we've always had problems with. Gartner, NASCAR slides, everything Holly else. Yeah. I mean, I literally, I'm not going to name names because I don't want to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sort of just, no, I mean, no, I, I mean, <laughs> we finished my point. So earlier this week, I was told by someone that, that did a presentation that they were coerced to using terms in their presentation and that their marketing department had gone out and invented some marketing terms for their product. Like just random terms mean nothing. We've never heard them before. And they wanted them to use it in their presentation. So I was sitting here, Ethan got it out first, but thinking meaningless is part of it. It's stuff gets uh, abused. I think we all agree SDN has kind of mm. uh, come to mean too many things to too many people. Um, sort of the bedizening of terms occurred to me. But buzzword, anything that qualifies for buzzword bingo mm -hmm. probably should not be used in public. Uh, I've become allergic to FCAPs in a network management context because it adds absolutely nothing to the discussion. You know, we put the F in F caps. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You, you going to touch that? No, no, I'm not going to touch that one because we'll have to bleep that part out. <laughs> um, but actually, I want to I jump in here and I want to I throw out a couple more terms. And they're not, because one of the things that we've discussed here is, is we take a term that stands for something, single pane of glass. Um, you know, ease of use, those kinds of things that, as Ethan said, are checkboxes on a thing that now I have all of the checks and we can buy this. But what about the terminology that people have appropriated to describe a topic to sound cooler? And the one that always stands out to me for this is, well, I'd really like to know some information about this product. Let's double click on that idea. <laughs> or, what is the ask here? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I said it, somebody was like, oh, man. That is painful. What is it about those terms that, that kind of doesn't, doesn't fit right with us? Anybody want to try the same to problem with the word gift, as in he gifted him with something. It's like he gave him something. Yeah, and, I, and I think maybe that's what it comes down to is, this, is imprecision in language. It's a neologism that's completely, there's no need for that neologism. Mm -hmm. yeah. I understand some of those words. 
<laughs> that, that's because, that's because <laughs> Tony, really Tony, guilty. ism is not a word. <laughs> <laughs> that's because really words are, are, are symbols of things, right? And they're not in and of themselves really anything. They carry the meaning that we've assigned to them as a society. So in our industry, we have our jargon. Just like if you go to a, a law office with 50 lawyers, they have their jargon. And there might be some lawyers in there that hate it. And like, I can't believe you just used that legalese with me. Well, we have it too, you know, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. Um, but ultimately, you can turn any word into a verb. You know, I can say, I ethaned that guy today. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> but I know what that would mean. But it, but, right, but if it became a term, which I hope it does now very much, well, <laughs> it will eventually carry some sort of meaning and, uh, get, and eventually get adopted into the Webster's uh, Dictionary. Right? I think I to be ethaned is probably to, to negate the, <laughs> the dive on that Greg Farrell would give somebody when he disagrees. <laughs> I agree. It's to be recovered. Oh. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to wrap it up here because uh, I think Phil's words were actually quite eloquent, eloquent when he said that oh, words you. are just symbols for things that mm -hmm. we attach meaning to. And when that terminology changes over time or becomes attached to different things, we end up with the fact that premise and premises are actually from the same root word. And one of them described a dwelling and the other one described ideas about the dwelling. And so they've kind of flip-flop back and forth through history. But when you're dealing with technical people, whether they be doctors, whether they be police officers, whether they be IT workers, precision matters. And so we have to make sure that the words we use are well-defined and that the words we use are well enough known by everybody that there is no confusion. But, you know, what do I know? I'm just a podcaster. <laughs> Got right. one more for you. So earlier this week, a friend of ours told us, that this just so I can this on a humorous statement, walking through the airport and told someone they should probably stop what they're talking about. You really don't want to be talking about the bomb for the ISIS project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, Taryn. Yeah. The On-Premise IT Roundtable is once again brought to you by Gestalt IT, home to IT coverage from across the enterprise. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Gestalt IT and at Facebook.com slash Gestalt IT. Very original. The On-Premise IT Roundtable is produced by Rich Straffolino. That's me. Until next time, from all of us here at Gestalt IT, have a super sparkly day.